Hello and welcome back to Plus Size Kite Reviews. First off, I'd like to thank everyone who either watched, liked, commented, or shared my last comparison video. I really love the kite community and find wherever you tend to travel with your kite bag, you meet amazing, energetic, positive people. For those who haven't seen my last video, but stumbled upon this one on YouTube, I do recommend it as I will likely be referencing some of the points I made there. A quick reminder about me, I am a 42 year old kite surfing enthusiast, but I do not work in the industry. I'm 6 feet tall and weigh 105 kg at the time of review, so this is certainly worth factoring in when I mention wind ranges and jump heights. I have been kiting for about 10 years now, and mostly rode old north slash duotone evos and dices up till 2020 when I switched over to the current north orbits to progress my big air and kite loops. I have bought orbits every single season since, usually in 9 and 11 meter, and I do also have a couple of core XR7s, 8 and 9 meter, that I got a couple years ago for woosting when they were all the rage. I'm not affiliated with any brands, and I do buy my own gear online or from local shops here in Auckland, New Zealand, where all the footage you will see today is taken from. If you would like more information about kite surfing in Auckland, feel free to comment on this video, I do read them all. These duotone kites I am comparing today were borrowed from local friends of mine who had to order them from overseas as we don't have a local retail shop here in Auckland for duotone, which is why I couldn't include them in my last video. The Rebel SLS was by far the most requested kite to be included after I released the video, so it's been on my radar for some time now. And with all the duotone pro big air team switching from Rebel SLS to Evo D-Lab, that also was added to the must try list as well. I'm going to mainly be comparing these kites to each other and to my other kites, the 2023 North Orbit and the Core XR7, as they share many of the same high points. You can see how the Orbit and XR stack up to other popular big air kites in my last video. I'll be riding all the kites on 22 meter lines with the brand's own bars. One thing that is worth mentioning since my last video, I have switched all my Orbits from 2022 to 2023 in 9, 10 and 11 meter sizes. When I did my last review, I had only tested the 10 meter size of the 2023 Orbit and felt it was a huge improvement from the 2022. I do stand by that, particularly for the 10 meter, which I would say feels about 5-10% to better overall due to its design tweaks and weight reductions. In the 9 and 11 meter size, it's perhaps only about 5% better overall. Um, I did borrow an 8 meter as well for a few sessions uh, a while back in Cape Town and loved it because of the new uh, deeper attachment point on the wings. It made it feel more stable in big winds and I was able to get the kite a lot lower in loops than I previously was able to with uh, 8 meter orbits in previous years. Now onto the duotone kites. The first of which I tested was the 2023 Rebel SLS in 9 meter and boy did it live up to the height. I managed to get two sessions on this kite, one for an hour and 22 to 28 knots and another for an hour and 25 to 35 knots. In the first session I also rode both my 9 meter orbit and 9 meter XR each within an hour of trying the Rebel just to confirm my thoughts. The first thing I noticed with the Rebel is that the weight on the bar isn't as heavy as I expected it would be. Um, I would put its pressure much closer to the Orbit than the XR, which is a significant difference. The XR is one of the heaviest kites I've ridden in terms of bar pressure. The power of the Rebel is masked a lot more by how light and playful the kite is. When I got out riding, I felt very controlled and sending my first jumps and loops felt so easy, smooth and controlled, and the height was impressive for how little effort they required. The feedback on the bar is not as direct as the Orbit, however, and you can feel a slight delay with everything you do from the bungees on the wingtips, I assume, but the fabulous speed of the kite does make up for this a lot. When you send the kite aggressively to boost, you feel the power kick in, and while jumping you seem to catch all the little extra gusts to lift you higher just like the XR without quite the same aggressiveness of the XR. As I mentioned in my last video, I do find the XR needs a bit of time to get used to when I haven't used it in a while, even after dozens of hours with them, but this Rebel, despite never having ridden one myself, felt very comfortable and easy to ride immediately. Compared to the Orbit, you can feel right away you're going to jump higher more consistently, and versus the XR, because it's so friendly, I would also say most people will have more confidence to hold it down in stronger winds and really go for those big jumps they might otherwise be too afraid to. The slight negative compared to the Orbit, because the control isn't quite as direct, is that I would find it more challenging to try some of the tricks that are on the edge of my skill set, particularly with kite loop variations. Um, 
for just your standard straight loops, I think if you already know how to, you won't have any troubles with doing them on this kite however. The Rebel's looping ability is certainly much closer to the orbit than the XR. In terms of jumping high and woosting, I would wager that most riders, uh, from beginner to intermediate to somewhere around my level, which you might call amateur or advanced, would on average jump higher on this kite than either the Orbit or the XR, but probably the more powerful or experienced riders might still have the most potential to jump high and woost with the XR7. It's a shame the Duotone team seem allergic to woosting because they're many of the best riders in the world and we almost never see them post big scores. If I was their marketing team, I'd be telling them to post scores more often and offering them a 20k bonus if they set the Woo world record on a Duotone kite. A lot of kiters like me who buy new kites every year love Woo, and I'm bloody sure riders like Mark Jacobs, Martin Hager, Mike McDonald, and Jamie Overbeek have sold a lot of their respective kites by going big on Woo with some regularity. My Woo scores from the lighter session on average were higher on the Rebel, but the marginally highest jump I had of the day was the XR7. As expected, the orbit was about 5 to 10% lower than each of these. I think in stronger winds you would also feel more confident to send the Rebel SLS than either of these kites as it does a great job in the gusts. When I went on the stronger session I didn't feel crazy overpowered, was regularly jumping in the late teens, topping out just over 19 meters at a spot where my PB is only a little more at 22 which I set on an XR7. I then later switched to the orbit and lost about 5 to 10 percent height again on the Woo. Uh, the kite did seem a bit less stable as well than the Rebel and the Gus. Unfortunately the wind dropped down before I got a chance to try the core out. It's also important to keep in mind and to be fair to core, the XR7 is a kite I bought in 2021 and it still holds up pretty damn well. Uh, it is a shame they only change the kites every two years when so much has changed in the last 12 to 18 months in kite design and fabrics. From the launch videos and the initial reviews, it doesn't look too much like the XR8 has much difference to the XR7, but it will be interesting to see if the new 5-strut Alula kites they are hopefully bringing out can compete with these other more recent kites. Overall, I think right now the Rebel SLS is probably the most user-friendly big air kite on the market for just jumping high. Uh, that would get most riders that new Wu PB and would be my choice uh, of these first three for big, big wins and smaller sizes. I'd really love to try the eight meter Rebel SLS and 45 knots, uh, but that size and those winds don't come around too often. The Orbit would still be my pick for loop progression um, and big air skills with rotations, particularly in kite loops, because the Orbit is so direct and the loop and catch are so fast and forgiving. You still can't look past it to get into loops and progress them to loop variations. Although the Rebel, because of its hang time, would surely be better for things like board offs and classic air style. Now let's look at the Evo D-Lab. I was able to ride this kite in both 9 and 10 meter, however only in about 22 to 30 knots and for about 30 to 40 minutes each. Right away, anyone who pumps up one and handles it is going to realize how light the thing is. It's very noticeable. We only pumped up the kites to 8 PSI and it felt perfectly solid and rigid. In comparison, I pumped my Orbits and XRs up to about 10 or 11 PSI in the 9 meter size to make sure they hold their shape when it gets wild and windy. The kite is also so light and slick on the leading edge that you can't just leave it sitting on the beach as within seconds it's starting to move or slide away a bit. I immediately got a little paranoid wondering how durable the fabric is and how easy it would be to repair this kite if heaven forbid I got a tear in the fabric sliding down the beach. Price wise it is about 25 to 30 percent more expensive than the Orbit. Uh, I don't know if they are repairable by most local kite repair people so that's a worry for sure. In contrast my Orbits have been cheap as chips to repair locally and I've hardly noticed the difference in performance with small panel patches up in my older ones that needed them. The core are also super durable and I've not had to repair either of them in two years. Once you launch it you immediately feel some serious power, how forward it sits in the window and wants to accelerate in the direction it's facing with minimal effort. The bar pressure isn't crazy like the XR and it felt about the same as the Rebel. It might even be a bit less but because it has so much power it's a bit tricky to tell and I was in gustier winds for this test. 
The kite, of course, being how light it is, is incredibly nimble, and the 10 meter felt like my 9, possibly even quicker. The direct connections and no bungees on the wingtips felt great, and the control was very direct, which I like. Riding around on it at first feels strange because of its position in the window, how quick and easy it is to move around, and how much power you feel at your fingertips. Then, when you send it to jump, how quickly it pivots, and how aggressively it shoots up to 12 like a rocket. Engaging the kite has even more speed than the orbit, and then, from when it starts shooting to 12, to when it yanks you off the water, it has the speed and power, if not more, than either the XR7 or the Rebel. Because it's so light, it's also a lot easier to control with one hand. You can really lean back to get your edge while controlling it with one hand, and I'd imagine for the pros, doing tricks with one hand on the bar, uh, and one on the board would be a lot easier because it's so responsive with so little effort. The combination of this speed and aggressiveness is unlike any other kite I've tried. I started on the 10 and found it very similar to riding most 9s uh, and I felt so comfortable on this size. I tried my first small basic jump and shot up 11 meters unexpectedly. Then my second jump I thought I'd go for a smaller easier loop and that was also 11 meters which really took me by surprise in the best way of course. Then on my third jump I thought I would try just a little more edging and power and slightly harder send but nothing crazy and I was surprised when that loop was over 13 meters on the Wu. The loops are fast but still have a solid yank. They're not quite as tight as you get with the orbit but the kite moves around and climbs back up so fast that it is forgiving enough to go as big as you're used to with your other kites. The highest loops I tend to do around 15-16 meters on an 8 or a 9 meter on the Wu so this was getting up there for sure especially for a 10 meter the only 10 meter I've done higher loops on at around the 14-15 meter mark was the Ocean Rodeo Rise V1, which was a much windier session as well. So shout out to the Rise, its seductive pleasures and 5 strut hybrid C still haunt me to this day. Now what was also very noticeable with the D-Lab was the crazy hang time. Like the XR Rebel, the kite just grabs every little gust on the way up and as you travel down, each heli loop almost lifts you back up for a moment the more you travel downwind. And because the kite moves so quick, you can keep blasting little tight heli loops very easily as you travel down to go further with good control. Even if you just park the kite a little bit off to the side, somehow it keeps floating as you descend. This is especially enjoyable on the loops as you feel like you're getting more swing and putting the brakes on for you as it recover, after you've recovered the kite. The swing after the loop on the 10 meter reminded me a bit of like riding my 11 meter orbit powered with longer 24 meter lines. With that kite, I get a longer swing and big hang time. Only the D-Lab, there's a little more lift as well. So I bet it would be even more impressive hang time on the 24 meters lines that the bar allows you to swap to. So of course I loved this kite right away. Then after a couple dozen more woos and loops, I came in and switched down to the nine meter. When I went out on the nine meter, perhaps the conditions got a bit stronger and more gusty, as I did find it a little harder to figure out. The kite is so fast for a 9 meter that I kept over sending the jumps a little bit and it was so aggressive I felt a bit timid at times in the gusts. In the kite's defense I was riding this session on a fairly sore knee from a painful crash the other day so that was definitely on my mind as well. I do think with more time the 9 meter would be my size of choice but on the day I preferred the 10. I did switch back to my old 9 meter orbit to get good perspective and I couldn't believe that it actually felt a bit slow and heavy two terms I would never have used to describe a 9 meter orbit before. In terms of woo scores, although the wind was inconsistent all day, there was about a 15 to 20 percent decrease in the height going back to the orbit. And my biggest loops on the D-Lab were actually higher than my biggest woos on the orbit. It is clear that this is the most high performance big air kite on the market right now, and there is a reason all the Duotone team riders switched to it from whatever kite they were using before in competition. If I'm honest, I think it's far beyond everything else that you would have to bet on for the rest of the big air podiums in 2023. Um, that said, is this the best kite for most people? Probably not, especially when factoring in the price tag. I think there is an argument that most progressing riders will on average feel more confident, have more fun and jump higher on a Rebel SLS, particularly in sizes under 9 meter. And for riders wanting to progress their big air skills and get into kite loops or progress their first kite loops, they would still probably do better on an 8 or 9 meter orbit because it's not as aggressive and it's so user friendly. I personally would find myself very nervous to try tricks I'm capable with on the orbit on a smaller D-Lab at this stage, but I could definitely see myself getting used to it over time. 
For any rider in larger sizes 10 and up, I think it's going to be impossible to beat the D-Lab if you are willing to pay that much extra for its cost. I've also seen its performance in lighter winds and it is an excellent low end, so there is an argument the right size, like a 10 meter, might cover the workload of both a 10 and 11 meter kite from other brands. Now for the more advanced riders above my level, and certainly the pros, it's not even close. In any size, the D-Lab is a huge step forward in performance in every metric, and it would be very tough to compete against it in a bigger competition that values height and technicality. One more semi-amusing negative about the D-Lab is that it's a pain in the ass to put away. It's so rigid and hard to fold, and it's so light that it keeps unwrapping in every little gust. You're also terrified you've left a small piece of shell or debris from the beach in what might scratch your new Ferrari of kites. But despite that, I should add, after this session, I couldn't help myself, and I ordered a 10 meter and a truss bar from overseas because this could not be left as a one kite stand for me. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Please like, subscribe, and comment below to keep me motivated to keep making these comparisons. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Jason of Montreal to see what kites I'm trying next. Holy shit! Jesus, that was surprising. 13 live on the 10 meter.